All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be testing four different cheap knife sharpeners from Amazon. I have four knife sharpeners. They are all under $15, and I have four knives, one for each sharpener. These knives are, these are also cheap, but they're not, these are like $12 a piece, I think. So these aren't, obviously aren't like very high end, but they also aren't like complete trash bottom of the barrel. So they're kind of, kind of in the middle. So I think they will serve us well for our tests. Now, of course, the basic idea here is we're going to, I'm gonna take all four of these knives, put them on the sharpness tester. We'll get a baseline reading of how sharp they are right from the box. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna absolutely torture these knives, see how dull we can make them. And then I will put them back on the sharpness tester, get a secondary reading, see how dull we've made them. And then we will use a different knife sharpener for each knife. And then we'll, we will retest them again. And then we will see how much of the edge we have brought back with these cheap knife sharpeners. So it should be fun. So before we go ahead and do the sharpness tester, I don't know if you saw or not, but I also took, a, I took an engraving tool and went ahead and just numbered each knife. That way we don't lose track of which one's which. But before we put them on the sharpness tester, let's go ahead and just do a uh, visual sharpness test and we'll just see how they cut a piece of paper. Go with knife number one. That's sharp. That's how a knife should be. They should all be the same. Okay, so these are these are very, very, very sharp. These might just be. Oh yeah. These are actually shaving sharp. Okay. Did not expect the generic kitchen knife to be shaving sharp. So let's go ahead and get them on the sharpness tester and see where they're at. Utility razor blade is anywhere from 150 to 200. So I'm going to assume that they're probably going to be in that range since they're shaving sharp. All right, knife number one, see where we're at. Ooh, 195. So just shy of a utility razor blade. You see that 195? Knife number two, see what it's got. Oh, a little bit more, 220. Knife number three. Two hundred and twenty-five. So just a little bit. They're actually getting higher, <laughs> higher as they go. It's kind of odd. Number four. Two hundred and twenty. All right. So all of these are pretty much right around the sharpness of a razor blade. Maybe a little bit duller than a, a utility razor blade, but nonetheless, pretty sharp. So now let's uh, see how dull we can make them. So let's start off really light and we're just gonna use a two by four and I'm just gonna maybe chop on it a little bit. I wanna try, I wanna try to make the damage as, as even as possible. So I'm gonna try to do a lot of like slicing or slicing with each one and I'm gonna try to do it like at even levels. So let's just go with like maybe five like hard swipes through the two by four. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe we'll do some chops. Okay, it's pretty good. Let's go on to knife number two. chops. I know you guys can't see it, but the edge of that blade is bent a little bit. Number three. Oh, that's a nice sound, isn't it? Doesn't feel incredibly more dull. I think this wood is going to do as, uh, as much damage as I thought. I kind of figured that since they were kitchen knives, wood would kind of really, really dull them down. Let's move on to something harder. Well, <laughs> I think this is going to be triggering. 
for some people. Ugh. Let's do like 10 passes with each one. <laughs> that is, that is disgustingly dull now. Oh wow. The trick here is I don't want to completely like damage these beyond repair. I want to make them just dull enough, like, I don't know how to word this. Like I want to make them dull enough to simulate normal use. I don't want to completely let's just like destroy them and expect these cheap knife sharpeners to like completely bring them back to life. But I do want to make them dull. Let's go five passes on the edge. Ooh. Yeah, I think we're I think I think we're getting pretty close to where we need to be. Let's try the paper test again. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what kind of what I figured. I think we're just about where we need to be. So let's see what the sharpness tester has to say. The paper test tells us that we are <laughs> in pretty rough shape. Let's see what we what the sharpness tester has to say. Nineteen hundred and eighty-five. Okay, so, <laughs> so knife number one, we are in very rough shape. Knife number two, let's see where we're at. Okay, not quite as bad. 1665. So, it's not, not as bad. Knife number three, let's see where you're at. Jeez, knife number three is in rough shape. 2520. That is, uh, that's gonna be the worst one yet. Knife number four. Let's see how bad this one is. Knife number four is the sharpest one of them all. 1550. So it must not have got much damage. So just in case you were curious, the scale comes with a little, like, gauge, to, or a little scale so you can see how dull your knives are. All the knives, except for number three, fall under a, the category of an edge broken or torn from blade, which is really bad. Knife number three, since it was over 2,500, 2,000 is as high as this goes, and 2,000 is a common butter knife. So number three is more dull than a common butter knife. So that's really bad. All right, so now let's get into the sharpeners. So for knife number one, we're gonna be using the Smith's two-step knife sharpener. This one is $6 and we're using it first because this one brings back memories because I used to have one just like this. I almost need a knife to get into this thing. Anyway, I used to have a knife sharpener just like this way back in the day whenever I would collect like gas station knives. And I, I remember I had this thing stuck in my head that the more times that I run my knife through this, the sharper it's gonna get. So as a kid, I used to spend, I mean, like an hour just sitting here, just, just running a knife through this thing, just over and over and over and over for like an hour. And there'd be like a pile of metal shavings and I would just keep thinking in my head like, this thing's gonna get sharper, it's gonna get sharper, it's gonna get sharper. But obviously that never happened. All of these knife sharpeners, just a forewarning, all of these knife sharpeners pretty much work the exact same way. They have a carbide, side and they have a ceramic side and none of them really have good instructions on how to use them like obviously they all work the same way you run the knife through them but none of them say like how many passes you should do to a super sharp edge or like or, you know what i mean like they don't have any like definitive instructions so for each one i think i'm gonna go with like 20 passes on each side with for each one and then we'll measure them and then of course we'll see how everything shakes out. So we're going to do the carbide side. I seem pretty, pretty rough. 
on. It's definitely not, not that sharp, but I can feel that it's smoother. So whatever kind of burrs or whatever were, was on the edge, it uh, definitely kind of worked them off of there. All right, let's go with the ceramic. We'll go 20 on it too. I can't lie, it feels all right. Let's see if we can actually cut paper now. Maybe these edges are, uh, maybe they're more damaged than 20 passes. Let's do 50 passes for each knife. I mean, that should be, that should be more than enough to, for it to do what it needs to do. So we're at 20. I honestly feel like it could still use a little bit more. It's getting better. It's not bad. All right, let's go ahead and go. Let's just go for 100. Why not? I think we might have actually got somewhere. No way. All right, and that's just on the carbide side. We haven't even finished our 100 laps, 100 laps, our 100 uh, passes on the ceramic side. So we were at, I think we've only done 20 on the ceramic side. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that last like 40 passes, I didn't feel like it was really doing anything. That feels very sharp. Very, very sharp, actually. Ooh, I have a feeling that could potentially be sharper than it was in the beginning. Some parts of it, maybe where it was you know, the most damaged, don't feel quite as sharp. For blade number two, we are going to use the AccuSharp knife and tool sharpener. This one is $10. Now, this one, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you I don't like this one for two reasons. One, it's $10, right? So it's double the price of the Smith's sharpener, but it only has, it only has the carbide. It has no ceramic, and it's twice the price. So how does that work? How do you have half of the sharpening capability, but twice the price. But also, something I don't like about it is that it's like extremely unsafe because the way that you're supposed to use this thing is you're supposed to put your knife like this and then you're supposed to put the carbide tip on here and then swipe this over your knife. So like if you were to like slip off, I mean, you're just asking to completely skin either your hand or your fingers, I mean, I'm, obviously, I'm gonna be careful, but like, this is just a disaster waiting to happen. I do not like the design of this at all. We'll do uh, 100 passes, just like the other one. This is like really, really digging in. It's even got, it's making like circles of metal. So it's like, it's taken quite a bit off. That was 50. This thing, I feel like the immediate difference that I can feel between this and the Smiths is that the Smiths on the carbide, whenever you, the first like say 40, 50, 60 pulls, it feels like it's taking metal off. And then once you kind of reach that predetermined angle that they have, it, you can kind of feel it getting easier and easier as if it's, you know, it's taken off the metal, it needs to take off. And then now it's just kind of, you know, like, keeping the edge going. It's not like, it's not, it doesn't continue to take off metal every single time, no matter what. This, every single pull feels like it's just like ripping off more and more and more metal. It doesn't seem like it's ever, like I don't feel like I've reached the, whatever angle this is yet. I just feel like I, I just keep ripping off metal and just keep ripping and ripping and ripping and ripping. So this feels very, like very crude. 100, that is probably, looks like maybe three times the metal shavings of the Smiths. It feels very sharp, very, very sharp. 
Dare I say that feels sharper than the Smiths? Okay, maybe there's something, something going on with just this single carbide tip, no ceramic. Maybe AccuSharp knows what they're doing. With that little paper cut, I'm impressed. Now for knife number three, if you remember, knife number three is the one that is the most damaged. It had, it was over 2,500 on the, uh, on the sharpness scale. So I'm gonna be using the Gorilla Grip knife sharpener. This one was $9. And I'm gonna be using this one specifically, since this is the most damaged knife, because this knife sharpener has three different levels. Most of these just have a carbide and then a ceramic. This has something else that is labeled repair, sharpen, and then polish. So I'm gonna do just like everything else, 100 passes through each one. So it's gonna be 300 passes because this one is severely messed up. All right, that is 100 passes through the repair side. I can already tell a pretty nice difference. I think this one's gonna end up really good. Let's go ahead and move on to the sharpen section. Mm -hmm. feels duller than it was from the repair. Let's see, let's see how it feels after the, uh, the polish. One hundred. It doesn't feel, I can't tell if it's not sharp or if it's one of those knives, or if now it's one of those knives that it's so sharp you can't really feel it, if you know what I mean. If you spend a lot of time around knives, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at all. Yikes. Not looking good. At least not for the Gorilla Grip. Now for number four, our last knife. We have the uh, Sharpow. I, kept want, I keep wanting to say Sharpenow. Sharpow. This one is the most expensive one. This one is $15. This one kind of sucks because it has a, a suction cuff that usually you would you know suction down to a counter or something, but Obviously, since I have this wood top, I cannot utilize that. And this one is just like all the other ones. It's got a two-piece or a two, yeah, two-piece uh, carbide and then a ceramic. We'll go ahead and get started, just like the rest of them. This one's going to be kind of, kind of weird to hold. I don't want to cut myself. Jeez. This carbide is not playing around. This one is going to take off serious metal. All right, we're done with the carbide. That feels incredibly sharp. I mean, that feels like... That's literally already shaving sharp. We have, that's not even the ceramic yet. I mean, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I'm just saying that I think we might already have a winner. If this one wins, it would be ironic because this is the, also the most expensive. So let's run through our ceramic. One hundred. That feels even more sharp than it was before. Let's see if it cuts this just like butter again. If I had to place a bet, I would say that this one, knife number four, it's probably gonna be the sharpest. That carbon uh, or carbide side really took off a ton of metal. It's kind of crazy. All right, this is it, our big finale. We're starting off with knife number one, representing the Smith's sharpener. And just for reference, the number one knife started off before we did any damage to it. It was a 195 on the sharpness tester. Not bad, not bad at all. 350 grams. I'm not good at math, but what is that? Just about 150 grams more than standard? Not bad at all. Knife number two, representing the AccuSharp, the one that is only carbide, no ceramic, no polish. Really curious to see where this one is. Okay, not horrible. This one is at 515 grams. I guess, so I guess that just that carbide alone is obviously not gonna do as well as the carbide and ceramic. Number three, representing the Gorilla Grip. 
This is the one that has the three uh, levels, and I was not very impressed with. And it didn't even really cut the paper that well. So this is probably going to be disappointing, I would say. <laughs> that is, uh, wow. That is just horrible. 1,910 grams. That is, uh, wow. At 1,910 grams, that kind of seems like you'd almost be better off just, uh, like, <laughs> sharpening it on a, on a rock or something. And last but not least, we have knife number four, representing the Sharpal. See where this is at. Ooh, 345 grams. That is really good. All right, I'm going to crunch some numbers, and then I will come back, and we will know which one is the best. All right, the numbers are in, the numbers have been crunched, and we have a couple things to talk about. So, when I originally just crunched the numbers, just, you know, you guys saw me do the test, crunched the numbers, if you go by those numbers, then the Smith won by a pretty decent margin. The Smith was, the Smith was the best, and the Gorilla Grip was the worst. I was looking at the numbers, and if you guys remember, this Gorilla Grip, after the blade was damaged, it registered a 2520. And then I sharpened it 100 passes on each thing, and then it got down to, it only got down to a 1910. So whenever I was crunching these numbers, I, I saw that, I kept looking at that, and I thought there's just no way that this thing did that poor. So I started really looking at this thing, and I Ultimately, I ended up doing it again through this one. And I noticed that with this sharpener in particular, for some reason, you gotta have that knife at a perfect angle for each pull for it to actually take the metal off and sharpen. If you have it too flat or too far the other way, it doesn't work. And for some reason, the other ones aren't like that. This is the only one that's like that. So the first time I, I sharpened with this one, I think that's what happened. I just wasn't really paying attention to the angle too much and I probably got like a third of them maybe at the right angle or whatever. So I redid it, 100 passes on each one, made sure the angle was good each time. Instead of a 1910, that brought it all the way down to an 810. So by that number, that puts the Gorilla Grip in first place, and then the Smiths in second place, and then the Sharple in fourth place, or in third place, and then the, uh, what was this, AccuSharp, I think, into fourth place, which is to be expected. It's the only one that has just one carbide tip and no ceramic side. So this one is not surprising. This one is the worst. So if you want to know just which one works the best, you know, and that's it. The Gorilla Grip sharpens the, the most, barely more than the Smiths, but just purely by the numbers, it does sharpen more or it gets it sharper. And on top of that, it sharpened the knife that was the most damaged. So that's that. But if you want to factor in cost and you want to see, and you want to know which, which sharpener sharpens the best per dollar, that goes to the Smith. The Smith sharpens the best. The, <laughs> I did some complicated math. The Smith sharpens 0 0.0036 cents per gram of sharpness regained. That even makes sense. The best sharpener per dollar is the Smiths. And then if you want to go by, if you just want to go by per dollar, uh, first place is the Smith. And then second place is the Gorilla Grip. And then third place is the AccuSharp. And then fourth place is this Sharpenal because this one, or Sharpal, however you say this, this one is the one that, of course, if you remember, was $15. That is that is our conclusion. I know that was probably way more complicated than it needs to be. Just to sum it up, the Gorilla Grip sharpens the best. and For it just sharpens the best outright, and the Smith sharpens the best per dollar. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to see me test other knife sharpeners or something else, do another type of video like this, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.